Didge, what do you think, Anna? I agree. We all know I gotta get some 24D on this lawn, get rid of these dandelions. <laughs> This is going to be my final review video to let you guys know exactly how I feel about this John Deere 8RX 410. Come on camera, adjust. This John Deere 8RX 410. I really wanna spend some time going through this machine letting you guys know what I like and maybe what I don't like and comparing it a little bit to our 1971 Minneapolis Moline G750. Now keep in mind there is a bit of a year advantage, just about 50 years, so there is some technology in this John Deere tractor that wasn't available when they built this G750. So keep that in mind as we go through this. Starting with the engines here, this machine has a nine liter John Deere engine, 410 engine rated horsepower, 310 rated power at the PTO. The Minneapolis Moline slightly smaller at I believe a 4.3 liter uh, inline six gas engine that's about 70 horsepower at the PTO. So also small disadvantage when it comes to the, uh, the rated horsepower on those machines. Everything is pretty easy to access on this machine. The hood goes way up there. You can really get to everything. And that's, uh, that's not even mentioning the track system here. We're set out to 120 inches wide, but you can clearly get to everything very, very easily. However, with the Minneapolis Moline over here, you can get directly into the engine and transmission area. And it's got this clear line of communication here. So you can talk with whoever's on the other side. You can pass tools back and forth. For that reason, I'm gonna give the win in this department to the Minneapolis Moline. Okay, 1030, I'll be there. Thanks. We're gonna to have to continue this later. I've gotta to run to a couple of different banks and a post office and a field and check some stuff out. Come on with me, kids. Post office. All right, gotta get the uh, COVID off the hands. I think I'm seeing soybeans. The plan here is to meet at the cornfield and I'm gonna meet with a couple people from John Deere, one from our local dealership who <clears throat> is in charge of the tech stuff and somebody right from John Deere who's also gonna come out and see. We're gonna inspect, number one, how the planter did, what the corn actually looks like as far as consistency, uh, the singulation of it and the consistent depth of it. And then we're also gonna look at how the implement guidance worked with the two satellites of the tractor and the planter communicating together. So that's what we're gonna be looking at out here in this amazing cornfield. We've got a little bit of inconsistency in this field. So I'm digging around trying to figure out if it's a germination issue or an issue with the freeze. We've got a couple couple plants here that are up a little bit and then the one in between hasn't even come through yet but it's there it was planted at the correct depth it's just slower for whatever reason temperature maybe or whatever other agronomic issue but overall this field is not looking bad it's just a little bit inconsistent which which does kill yield I think a lot of that is due to the frost some of it got frozen some of it did not Got it? Yep. There's one here too. We're gonna head up the road a few miles here, get closer to the yard to a field that I planted later after I had all the settings set up and I was comfortable with the tractor. This field here was our first one. We were still getting the settings right and it was really cold conditions, you know, and we had cold rain and overall it looks good, but it's a little inconsistent. Some of it froze off, some of it didn't. Uh, that is going to hurt yield a little bit, but we're going to go back home to some of the later planted stuff where it was in uh, warmer soil. Overall, quite a bit better stand out here though. A little bit of frost damage here on this one where the leaves are twisted up. The other ones around it all look good. There's a few of them like that. These ones right here. Overall looks pretty good though much better looking stand here this one got planted about four days later than the first one we looked at things look way better populations right on we did find a couple doubles in there and one skip um, but overall population looks good we're gonna go check one more field where we got some steep hills 
and see what the uh, implement guidance did there to see if it kept the planter on track. So this field looks even better. This one was actually planted the day after the first one when it was still pretty cold out, but it was a lot drier here and this didn't get nailed by frost, but the, the stand on this stuff looks really, really good. There's some really, really steep hills here. We tested the side hills to see how that implement guidance ran. Got some mixed results on that. Uh, so we're gonna monitor that, maybe walk it a little bit more at a later date. But um, as far as the stand goes on this thing, I mean, it, this field looks awesome. This is the best stuff I've looked at so far. Looks like nobody took care of my dandelions for me yet. But Sarah is bringing lunch back, so I got that going for me. Oh yeah, I was doing the tractor video. Forgot about that. Thank you for lunch, Sarah. Now I gotta run to the bank, so I gotta get that done. And then I'll be back, and then I can hang out on the farm, and then I can tell you guys what I think of the 8RX. I pushed it too soon, sent an empty tube. Let's try that again. doing nothing nothing it's dead. enjoying popsicles on a nice day dancing in the back of a John Deere <laughs> <laughs> time to fill a wagon for one of the landowners we got here we uh, we do a little trading a little bartering back and forth he feeds his cattle with some of our corn that we grow on his land you know I swear eventually I'm gonna get back in that shed and let you guys know what I think of that 8rx well he's loaded he can go Onyx wants me to do some work on his go-kart but I still got these two tractors sitting here to compare to let you guys know what I think of, you know, the differences between these two magnificent machines. I gotta go to the bathroom. Whew. All right, a little bit of go-kart work on something. I don't know what, and then um, I'm told family meeting at three o'clock. So nine minutes ago. Family meeting is over. I gotta go as fast as I can and explain to you guys what I think about this tractor. First off, some of you are really interested in the exact emerge planter. I did a lot of talking about that in my videos. You could see what kind of a job it was doing. Oddly enough, it was crazy. It singulates better at nine to 10 miles an hour than it does at five to seven miles an hour. It is a high speed planter and it ran well. We have big rocks, buried rocks, and I put it to the test and I didn't break it on any rocks. Um, we had some issues with row cleaner lines to start with. Once I got those figured out and got the initial setup done, the row cleaners work beautifully. Um, I plugged one brush and that was because a rock got stuck in the closing wheel and it backed the residue up into the row unit and the brush pulled it up. I can fix that. I did fix that with no tools at the field, pulled it apart, um, had never taken one apart before. The whole row unit comes apart by hand. You can get to everything. There's really nothing you can't fix by hand. You don't need a single tool. And uh, the planter, would we consider an exact emerge planter? Absolutely 100% yes. Uh, very impressed with that, especially with the hydraulic downforce side of things as well, to keep up with that 10 mile an hour planting speed, especially in variable soils. Um, going through the fields and looking at the singulation and looking at the consistency of the depth and, and what it did there, awesome planter, really awesome planter. Uh, if we were gonna move to one though, we would move to a 60 foot planter, I believe. I don't believe we'd go to a 40 foot planter. Uh, for the people asking how the speed compared as far as acreage covered with the 40 foot planter at 10 miles an hour versus the 60 foot planter at five and a half, we're covering a little bit more at 10 miles an hour with the 40 footer. Uh, but I just think if we were gonna move up, we would go to a 60 foot planter because that's what we're used to. But my overall rating of the planter, 100% a great machine and we would absolutely consider owning one of those. However, I don't think that the G750 over here would be capable of pulling a 60 foot planter at 10 miles per hour. So that could be a deciding factor um, because you never know when we might have to hook the planter up to this thing again. So I'm a little, I'm a little concerned. Look at this, here's fun fact. This G750, this is an Oliver 1655 painted yellow. They only made 212 of these beasts. This is a 1655 painted over yellow and white with a different grill on the front. Just a fun fact, just a fun fact. Everybody wants to know about the tracks on this thing and I gotta say, there's a lot of moving pieces there, there's a lot going on, but overall, really, really impressed. Obviously this thing floats better than the Moline G750. Uh, that's because of the ground contact, because it actually is quite a bit heavier. But uh, 
I was really impressed with the, the tracks on this thing. However, we didn't have a muddy spring, so it was a pretty easy spring, all things considered, for this machine. I did drive it through some mud holes because I had to get from one side of a ditch to another, and it floated pretty well. The one big thing I was really impressed with was the turning radius. This thing will turn on a dime. It'll probably turn about as, as well as this Moline does. It is unbelievable how tight this turns for something with four tracks on it. You know, and, and you talk, a lot of people will talk about the ridging on the end rows. If, as long as you're moving, even pulling a 40 foot planter, so I'm making a fairly tight turn, this thing does not ridge very bad. If you're sitting still and you decide to move that, crank that steering wheel to one side, yes, that front end will ridge. But if you're moving, you know, it's, it's no worse than our RTs, and I've never thought that our, our, our RTs are actually all that bad, all things considered. Somebody, somebody got hydraulic oil on the back of the planter here because they unhooked the return for the power beyond before they unhooked the pressure side and the tractor was running. That was me. Another thing I like about this planter, um, similar to our RTs, this is set on 120 inch spacings. And with these tracks on here, you can get to everything really easily. I mean, you can step right inside here. You can see even from out here, what kind of visibility you're getting to the back. Everything is wide open. You can see right to the hydraulics. You can see right down to the drawbar. Everything on this tractor is wide open, easy to get to, easy to work on. Very similar to the back of the Moline here. You also have easy access. The one nice thing about the Moline is you can actually drop the hitch pin in while you're sitting in the seat, if you're talented. It's not safe, I don't recommend it, but we've been doing it for 40 years. Ride quality on this thing is pretty awesome. It is. It is smoother than our RTs most of the time. The RTs, if you get a, a good buried rock underneath them like we have, it'll hammer you out of the seat sometimes. If it catches that rock just right, 99% of the time those things are smooth as glass until you catch that rock. That does not happen with this machine. It's much smoother that way. It's also got a ton of cab suspension, sometimes almost a little bit too much. It almost gets that sway feel to it inside there, a um, little bit like a, like a slow moving boat. It's not enough to annoy me. It wasn't even something I actually realized until I had Randy sit in there with me one night and, and we kind of noticed it. That's something with the cab suspension. Overall, this thing is really, really smooth. It is a smooth ride. It does not shudder going down the road. These belts, more so in the back than in the front, this is gonna be my number one complaint. And the deer guys already know where I'm going with this. But I gotta bring it up. These belts, between six and eight miles per hour while pulling the planter, you'd get a little bit of a shudder. It was almost like a harmonic vibration in the belts. And you could see these belts shuddering a little bit. At eight miles per hour, while planting, that would completely go away and the thing was smooth as glass. But between six and eight, there was a point in there where those things would just dance a little bit and it was enough to be annoying. Uh, I know that they're aware of it. I know that it's a thing, so I, I would assume they're gonna do something about that. It also wasn't as bad when we pulled the VT tool, the 2660 behind this, uh, that just about completely went away when it was under more load. I'm not sure I ever would have noticed it if I hadn't really been trying to feel for it. Lighting on this thing, absolutely phenomenal. These lights are spaceship lights, man. If, if you're a mile away from this thing, it looks like a small city. When you open the door up, the convenience lights around the cab turn on. The cab is surrounded by these LED lights all over. So you get that when you open the cab up, so when you're leaving at night, those are on for you, help you get down the steps. Also, every single light on this thing is individual. You can go in and program it differently in those Gen 4 monitors. I'm a, I'm a lighting guy, I just had them all on, wide open, full bore lighting as much as possible when I was working in the fields. Let's climb into the command center, and I will say, first off, right off the bat, this is Incredibly quiet. This is the quietest cab that I've ever had in a tractor. It's got a new buddy seat right here. My wife noticed right away this is a lot wider, a lot more comfortable. It does fold down for a hard surface or up to get completely out of the way. We've got some storage underneath here and behind it, the refrigerator. You've got a little bit of storage up top here, you know, for all your important files. Uh, where else? There's storage all over inside this thing. I like this little pocket for putting sunglasses and GoPros in. Let's uh, get the key turned on here. I'm just gonna start it up for you, actually. We'll give it a flick. There you can see the Gen 4 monitors are booting up. I love these monitors. 
unbelievably clean and simple. I do love those. I don't love the beeping. Just got a text message from the manager at our John Deere store. Apparently there is a 2018-95-70 RT coming in sometime this week. 470 hours on it, 36 inch tracks. It's got the Gen 4 processor, 15 liter Cummins. That's an interesting fun fact. Anyway, let's start by looking out the back here. You can see how incredible the visibility is, specifically out the back. Off to the sides, you can see everything. There is, you know, a little bit more going on over here with the monitor, the exhaust, and the step outside. That's pretty common, um, but looking around the hood, everything is narrow up here. Visibility is fantastic out from every direction. When it comes to the controls inside here, we've got this fancy Bluetooth radio. This actually works better than it does in my Silverado. This radio grabs my phone every time I walk by this thing, if it's running. Um, Bluetooth works really well. You've also got buttons down here to answer and hang up. You can answer and hang up up here as well. It shows you who's calling. The radio is pretty sweet. It's pretty nice. For those of us who use Bluetooth, this thing works really well. Uh, cooling and heating, most of it's up front here on this console. You've also got one back here on each side. That works really well. It's comfortable in here. It's quiet. The tractor's running right now so you can tell how quiet it is. Maybe I shouldn't talk so loud. I'm just trying to get these, these good points through. We've got sunshades on the sides, on the back, and in the front so you can you know, not get your shoulders sunburned when the sun's going down at night and that thing, that sun starts coming in heavy. Um, this thing will do about anything but there's not an overload of controls here to confuse you. It's got a few controls right here. It's got your main hydraulics, your transmission and throttle. Everything else is controlled on this system right here. And when it comes to the Gen 4 system, these two monitors here, I really, really like these monitors. They're very clean, easy to use. Without getting too complicated and going over too much stuff with you guys, I will just say um, I love the Gen 4 monitors. I really like these monitors a lot. There's some nuances you got to pick up on, but if you've been around computers at all, uh, I've been running the 2630s for seems like 10 years now, but uh, these Gen 4s are pretty easy to grasp, not difficult. You've also got this nice aluminum sliding rail for mounting your monitors. There's one in the back corner here as well, all kinds of charging ports. You've got your main hookups right down here, out of the way, but easy to get to. Overall, comfortable tractor. Got a 120 converter back here for plugging in anything else. Um, cab filters down below there. The window opens up. Opens up plenty far. You can get to anything. It's nice. Oh, also, got these Harley pegs right here. Those are nice. I can't even reach the window and I'm six foot three. You've also got a third peg over here for those of you who like to pivot your seat swivel the seat like I do and then you can look back here and see what the planter's doing. Oh, swivel on the seat. Way more swivel off to the right hand side, way more off to the left hand side. Um, inside the seat, this thing has got a, no kidding, it's, it, it, it massages you. Massages? There we go. Massaging chair. I've got it blowing cool air up from underneath me right now at the moment. This thing is all electric fully powered seat, um, works like a, like a fancy pickup truck. Uh, it's just on a couple different knobs here for moving front to back. You got your tilt, it's it's a nice seat. It's unbelievably nice seat. It's a, a ridiculously nice seat. Okay, Didge, I'm gonna drive this thing out and I'm gonna show these guys how this thing turns. You guys have seen me use this a lot in the field, so you, you can really get a better feel for it when I'm actually out doing some work with this thing. But I wanted to bring it out in the yard here and just crank it and, and show you guys how sharp this thing really does turn. I mean, it turns right around. So if we watch these tracks right out the back window and you can see unbelievably tight turning. Look at that radius it's making there. We're gonna come back around right towards ditch. That's a tight turn for a tractor like this. This is the 410 horsepower model, so it does have the E23 power shift transmission. I mentioned in one of my videos about how the transmission, when it was under load and I'd get to a hill, the shifting on it was really jumpy and it would slow down and I didn't feel like it was doing a good job of, of staying smooth. 
I did learn that I can go in here into the computer and I can change the transmission settings. It's all fully adjustable um, right over here to transmission. I can switch from manual to custom to full auto. So I can change the settings as far as what it's going to do and when it's going to shift like that. So if there's something I don't like and, it, and it's jumping like that, I can adjust that. I can change that so it doesn't let the motor bog as far before it shifts. So that is controllable by me. At the time I just did not know that. So that's something to keep in mind if you guys have these, these tractors with the E23 transmissions. You can go in and adjust. Boy, this seat gets a little weird sometimes. It's, it's massa massaging, massaging me right now. Just another look at the visibility there. The hood is not in the way at all. Pretty narrow hood. Pretty simple to see everything right out the back. And the uh, seat, incredible amount of pivoting to it. So you can rotate right around. Very comfortable. Oh, mirrors, power mirrors. Both sides, adjustable right up here. Just, uh, you don't have to get out really to do anything. If it's a really hot day, you can crank the cooling up just a little bit more so it blows more air up from underneath you. The 370 horsepower model, actually you can get with an IVT transmission and then that has Command Pro. So you've got a stick like we had on that 780 combine that was out here last year. Um, that's got a lot of the function buttons right on the stick. Uh, kind of works almost theoretically like a hydrostatic stick. Uh, very smooth. We've got the IVT in our 8360. They don't put that in the 410 horse model, but uh, I mean that would be nice sometimes, but if you need 410 horse, this E23 transmission is a pretty nice outfit. Let's back this thing in here and then I'll go through that uh, Minneapolis Moline a little bit and show you guys what I like and don't like on that machine. Just a quick mention on the def on this machine. It stayed really, really close with the fuel. So as the diesel would go down, every time I put in diesel, I would just put in some exhaust fluid as well. Uh, seemed to stay really consistent. Also, seemed really efficient on both. It, it did a really good job. Of course, it was pulling a 40-foot planter. It shouldn't have taken a lot of diesel because this tractor was plenty of overkill for that planter. So it was efficient as it should have been. Now, this 1971 Minneapolis Moline G750. Let's get into this. Oh yeah, this has got the direct under and over, which was very, very uh, revolutionary in its time. You can see here, this does not have the monitors like the Gen 4 monitors in the John Deere, but if you start it up, you can go right into warp speed. So that's kind of cool. Let's get a little, yeah, plus just listen to that. Yeah, plus the exhaust gasket breathes out the side and you know it because you can see it every time you increase the throttle a little bit. You don't get that with some of these newer machines. Um, the Bluetooth radio on this machine does not work nearly as good as that one. However, we do have this old fake woodwork right here on the dash, so that's kind of classy. I also really like this uh, large lever right here between your legs for shifting through the gears and the large levers for controlling the hydraulics. Most of the time we just run the buckets with those hydraulics. Um, it's got good, good solid PTO control right here other than the fact that you can't really always shut the PTO off. It slows down, but you can't shut it all the way off, which I think is a nice feature. Um, we've got the chrome suicide knob, which comes standard with all these models. Um, lighting on this is a little bit short compared to the 8RX over there. Uh, in fact, I think it's only got four lights and you can't actually individually control any of them at all unless you just knock them out like we did with that one there. But uh, overall, solid tractor. The bucket makes a lot of noise when you go over a bump. Um, that might be a, a 1970s Westendorf issue. But uh, you know, overall, pretty good machine. Um, due to the fact that I respect this one so much and it's done so much work throughout the years, I'm gonna say that uh, this machine, hands down, uh, wins the competition against that one um, and we are going to keep this machine around since we have had it now for probably 40 years longer than I've been alive and I, I believe we are the second owner of it when I say we I mean dad I don't own this thing at all maybe someday I can tell you I won't let him sell it that's for sure if he does I'm gonna have to buy it this machine over here everybody's wondering are we gonna buy the 8RX the answer is no not right now because quite frankly it's just not in our budget 
I think this would be a great fit for what we do, especially when it comes to the planter and the grain cart and, uh, and some of the smaller tillage. It would probably pull a VT tool really well. It would pull the ripper really well. Um, but right now, um, we just don't buy new tractors. We, we never really have in my lifetime. We don't buy new tractors. In two to five years, when there's a used market of these, I could see us really seriously taking a good look at a, at a good used one and potentially considering one at that time. But for right now, this one here has to go back. Again, I can't thank the viewers enough. Um, you know, you guys and girls are the reason that this tractor is here. You're the reason the planter was here. I've said it many times and I will say it again. John Deere gave me this stuff to run for this spring because there are so many viewers supporting me. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed getting to watch this tractor at work and that 10 mile an hour planter. It's pretty impressive stuff. Um, again, this came right from John Deere. My local Midwest Machinery dealership was here to help with it because they are my dealer. But this stuff came directly from John Deere. And so thank you to John Deere as well. Um, again, you guys, we passed 500,000 subscribers. So John Deere and myself are each donating $5,000 to Farm Rescue Organization. John Deere does a lot with Farm Rescue the way it is already, a ton with them. So this is just an extra $5,000 of gravy that they put on top because they, they wanted to say thank you to you guys and to me and to everybody who is interested in watching this thing out in the fields. So now I've got to do what I've got to do. And this machine, <clears throat> this machine has got to go, it's got to go back. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. crying you're crying I am so empty inside on a positive note we got all new off the husk t-shirts you can get them at my website mnmillennialfarmer.com or at farmfocused.com as long as you see farm focused that's the real deal thanks for watching everybody millennial farmer out <laughs>